Suppose we flip four coins with the outcomes represented by strings of H's and T's, H's for heads, T's for tails. How many elements are in the sample space? The simplest way to solve this is with the fundamental counting principle. If you're flipping four coins, There are two possibilities for the first toss, either head or tails. There are two possibilities for the second toss, either a head or a tail. There are two possibilities for the third toss, either a head or a tail. And there are two possibilities for the fourth toss. So by the fundamental counting principle, there are two times two times two times two different ways that you could flip heads or tails, which means there are 16 elements in the sample space. That's the simplest way to do it. Anytime though you get confused or not sure, or if you have extra time and you just want to check your work and make sure your intuition is working right, you could draw a tree diagram for this problem. And you can see that there are 16 branches to this tree. Each time you, you make a, a toss, you get a choice of head or tail. So each, each toss, you've got twice as many. So by the time you get to the fourth toss of the coin, or the fourth coin, depending on whether you're thinking about tossing one four times or four different coins, it really doesn't matter. You have a total of 16. The second part of this question says, suppose we flip the four coins again. This time it says, write the event that there are more tails than heads. Now, this might be a case where having a tree diagram would really be helpful but remember an event is a set so they're asking you to write the case where there are more tails than heads and, and I'm going to just attempt this without a tree diagram just thinking it through obviously if you have all tails you have more tails than heads so that's obviously in the sample space but if you have three heads you also have more excuse me, if you have three tails, you also have more tails than heads. So how many ways you could do could you do that? Well you could do it so that the first one was a head, but the rest of them were a tail. You could do it where the second one was a head, but the rest of them were tails. You could do it where the third one was a head, but the rest of them were tails. Or you could do it where the last one was a head, but the rest of them were tails. And I think you can think that through well enough to see that those are the only one, two, three, four, five possibilities. You either have four tails, that's more than heads. You have three tails. By the time you get down to two tails, then you have an even number of heads and tails. So the event that you're looking for consists of those five elements. Once again though, if you want to test your intuition or build your self-confidence or if you don't mind drawing out a 16 branch tree diagram, you can indeed just draw it out on a tree diagram. If you did it that way and you're looking for more um, you're looking for more heads than you're looking for more tails than heads. Again, I think I would start with all tails because that's the easiest one to think about. Obviously, if you have all tails, you've got more tails than heads. But you could also do it, like I said, you could have uh, three tails. And how could that happen? Well, you can get three tails this way and then a head. Well, where else can you get three tails? You could get three tails if you go tail, tail, and then grab a head for the third one and then grab a tail. You could also let them uh, let the second one be a head. You could start off with a tail, grab a head, but then let the last two be tails. Now you can't go further down on that branch because if you did you're going to get too many uh, heads. But there is one more possibility in this tree diagram and that would be if you start off with a head 
but the rest of them are tails. Now you can look through those branches and you won't find any other branch where there are more tails than heads other than the five that I've already highlighted. So there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. So again, there are five. I hope this would be just a uh, exercise in building your intuition and you probably wouldn't have to draw out the tree diagram. But never forget that if, as long as the number of branches is not too large, that's always an alternative if you want to check your work or if you're unsure of what you were trying to do another way. There's a third part of this question. This time it says, what is the probability of more tails than heads? Well, remember, we just calculated from part B that there, that there were uh, five there were five branches in that tree diagram with more tails than heads. And we also found out from part A that there were 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that there were 16 elements in the sample space. In other words, there are 16 ways that these flips could come out. Well, given that information, the probability that there are more heads than tails it's just the number of ways you could get more tails than heads which is five over the total number of possibilities which is 16 so from part A we get the five and from part B we get the 16 five sixteenths will not simplify there you go. Again, I'll just look at it just to be consistent. I will look at that on a tree diagram. I went ahead and pre put the uh, appropriate branches back on there. Again, as I said before, you can see there are five, one, two, three, four, five. Five out of a total of 32 altogether. Uh, excuse me, of 16 altogether. So 5 out of 16 is the probability. The final part of the same question is, suppose we flip four coins with the outcomes again, H is for heads and T is for tails. What's the probability of an equal number of each? Now, this time you're looking for two H's and two uh, T's. I'm going to do this uh, with a tree diagram, just drawing in, trying to draw in the branches that work, and let's see how that goes. You can look at the whole thing, too, especially if, you, if you've drawn it out for another part. But let's just suppose we want to look at it for um, and just draw in the branches that work instead of all of them. If you think about it, you can start off with either on the first one a head or a tail. Now, if you're looking for equal numbers, that means you have to have two of each. So, on the second one, you could have a head or a tail. Let's just stay on this side. If you've got two heads on this first branch, you have no choice. You can only get a tail for the third and the fourth. Because if you once you get two heads, you're not going to have equal number if you don't also have two tails. So that takes care of that branch. If you go down to this, the next one, 
you've only got one of each, so you can still have a choice. On the next choice, you can either choose an H, because you've only used one so far, or you can choose uh, get a tail, because again, you've only used one so far. Okay, now the leftmost of these branches has two heads in it, so you have no choice on the last one but to pick a tail. The next branch has two tails, so you have no choice but to pick a head. Okay, that takes care of all the cases where the first flip was a head. Now if you move over to the tail, you again have a choice of a head or a tail. If you choose a, a tail followed by a head, you've still got two choices because you haven't used two of each yet. So you still have a choice of a head or a tail. Now if you've used two heads, you have no choice. The next one has to be, I'm not writing them even, but let me do a little better than that. And like I said, once you've chosen two heads, you have to choose a tail for the last one. And on the next one, you've chosen two tails, so you have to choose a head for the last one. And of course, on the other end, once you've chosen two tails, you have absolutely no choice. You have to choose a head for the last possibility. And if you count, there are one, two, three, four, five. Six. So this time I did draw a tree diagram, but I thought it through so that it, so that I didn't draw all um, so that I didn't draw all 16 branches. So given that, I can tell you immediately that the probability that I get two of each is simply the number of ways I can get two of each, which I just calculated to be six divided by the total number of possibilities, which I've already found out back in part A, is 16. And that reduces to 3 eighths. So here I ended up doing a little tree diagram, but I've managed not to draw the entire 16 branches. And, and quite often you can do that. And that makes the work a little bit easier. But as I've done before, and as I've said before, you could, in fact, draw the full 16 branch tree diagram and just label the ones where the heads and tail count the ones where the number of heads and number of tails are equal so for example if you started here with the head head to be equal it would have to be tail tail so there's nothing else there near there that would work but if you move down to here you could go head tail take another head but then you'd have to take a tail to make them equal you could also go down this with head, tail, then you could choose another head, but to make it equal you'd have to choose, I mean, excuse, uh, you'd have to choose another tail, then you'd have to choose a head. In other words, head, tail, tail, head. And continuing, here you could do tail, head, and then you could do another head, but then you'd have to do a tail. You could do tail, head, tail, head. You could do tail, tail, but then you've got to do head, head. So you'd have head, head. And if you count these, one, two, three, four, five, six, you would end up with the same result before of the probability that there are equal numbers, which would mean really two of each,
would be this, I counted six that circled six out of a total of 16 branches, which again reduces to three eighths, and that's exactly the same answer we got earlier without drawing the whole tree diagram.